Hey, everybody, this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey is brought to you by our title sponsor, NHL Sense Arena. Look, we all want our kids to succeed in hockey, but let's face it, finding training that's both effective and enjoyable can be a real challenge, and not to mention expensive and a total drain on time, especially if you have to drive to the rink, uh, pay a, a private instructor. There's so many reasons that uh, money gets spent on this game. But that's where NHL Sense Arena steps in. It's a virtual reality training game that brings the rink into your home that takes off-ice training to a new reality. It's designed to improve hockey sense and IQ, something that's lacking majorly in the game today for both players and goalies. And you get unlimited access to over 100 drills and training plans from top coaches and players that can be played anytime, anywhere with drills approved by USA Hockey player and goalie development directors. Look, improving mental hockey skills at home has really never been more fun and any hockey player that uses this is going to have a blast, all right? I've used this before on my own, and it feels like you're so immersed in an arena, you sometimes forget you have a headset on. And again, it's not being on the ice, but it allows you to work on some of these skill sets like scanning, as I said before, hockey IQ, looking around the rink, making the right plays, that getting those repetitions in now as a hockey player are super important for your development. So NHL Sense Arena is giving all the listeners an exclusive offer for $50 off an annual plan when you use our code Hockey Never Stops at checkout. Again, that's Hockey Never Stops. All you got to do is go to hockey.sensearena.com. Uh, Again, that's hockey.sensearena.com. Use the code Hockey Never Stops, and you'll save $50 on your an annual plan of NHL Sense Arena. Make sure to check that out and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. <laughs> Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm Lee Elias, joined with Mike Benelli. Christy Cashiano burns on assignment today, and we got a little bit of a special episode today. We were sitting around the uh, production room talking about what would be a fun thing to do, and we decided to look into some of our younger hockey players that are also entrepreneurs to bring their stories to you. And our first one today is Max Rutkowski. Now, you might not know that name, but you will. Because Max is a senior at Franklin Regional High School in Murraysville, PA, and he's currently the captain of his varsity team and the highly ranked as Mark Stars. Max has multiple businesses, including E&M Lawn Care and Power Washing. It's a home care service, a tennis shoe and apparel company called Mindset, in addition to moonlighting as a private instructor. And having a job is not new to Max as he's been a counselor for multiple camps and he's always looking to further his knowledge base as recently he attended a leadership youth academy through the Westmoreland County Chamber of Commerce. Max is an entrepreneur in his own right. He is a highly talented player for a highly talented team and his story today is going to be one you are going to want to listen to with your kids uh, whether you're a coach or parent or anything and then anything in between. Max welcome to Our Kids Play Hockey. Yeah so I like to have multiple hobbies you know, sometimes it's not the greatest thing to just focus on one particular, you know, um, thing. So me and my buddy, you know, we're always looking to, you know, expand ourselves. You know, we want to, you know, be known. We want to be, you know, like, help out the community and stuff. So I had an idea of last year was to start this, you know, um, landscaping and power washing company. I like you know, making my own money. Uh, I don't really feel like working in like a nine to five job is something for me. I'm not really like an office guy. I couldn't sit down for multiple hours a day and do the same thing every day. Um, so I feel like having a flexible schedule is what really motivated me to be able to like, you know, fund it, try it out, test it out. And it's going really well for us now. Um, and like the shoes and like the clothing, I like collecting stuff like that. You know, it's one of my hobbies besides hockey. So being able to like create my own clothing brand and be able to like, you know, promote a good mindset. That's, that's why it's called mindset, right? Is we want to promote like good habits, you know, always making sure that you're doing the right things. You're staying positive, stuff like that. So that's, that's another reason why I started that just, you know, a hobby turned into something that I would like to, you know, promote to younger kids, older kids, older people, parents, all kind of stuff like that. So I got to say this real quick, just to give our audience some context. Mike, I know Mike knows, you know, who you play for. I want, I want the audience to understand. This young man plays on one of the, the top ranked teams in the country at one of the, the highest levels of hockey in the country at the U18 level. 
and he is the captain of that team and his varsity team. And he's saying that he likes to do other things beside hockey. Max, I'm bringing this up because, as you know, youth hockey, there's a lot of 365, 24-7 mentality from kids and parents. And here you are, who has, has arguably done what I think a lot of our parents want their kids to do, saying, yeah, no, I think you should do more than just the hockey. And yeah. I think, you know, I have a, I have these beliefs and I have these views and I want to share them. I think that is outstanding. And I, and I think, believe it or not, Mike, feel free to comment on this too. I think this is more powerful coming from you than us in almost any episode we've done because you're in it. Right. It's easy for us to sit here, uh, you know, at our nine to fives. No, joking. We, I'm, I'm the same met, uh, methodology as you. I don't like to do the same thing every day. It's easy for us to sit here and preach like, yeah, you should do more. Here's someone doing it and succeeding at it. So I just had to say that <laughs> and to give everybody some context on that. Yeah. And I love the fact that, uh, you know, you kind of teamed up with a friend of yours. And I think that I'm sure there's a lot of support structure there as far as that goes, you know, kind of feeding off each other and, and obviously getting business referrals. And so, so tell us how you started the lawn. Did you, did you start just at your neighborhood and, and then kind of branch out from there or, and, and how's that, uh, how's that process going for you in, uh, you know, the different changing weather conditions here on the East coast? Yeah. So last year, um, neither of us were able to drive. So it was mostly, you know, around the neighborhood and like surrounding neighborhoods. So my dad used to have a asphalt um, company is kind of like his little like side gig, but like on the side. And he had, I think it was seal coating. It was pavement. So he had a trailer already. So that worked out perfectly. My friend and I didn't drive yet. First was you had to create a name, right? We want to, you know, include both of our initials. So E is stands for Emmett. That's my best friend. He also plays hockey and M, M for Max. And then we kind of wanted to, you know, do everything. We didn't want to just stick to, you know, mowing lawns. That's why it's called home care. We can do anything, mulch, trim hedges, lawn care, power wash, do all that stuff. So home care is kind of like, you know, a word for everything. So when people see that, they're like, okay, we'll ask these kids if they can do this. So last year, um, I went on to Vistaprint. It's like a, you know, like a marketing website where you can like type in templates and stuff and like creates things. Um, I got door hangers. So it's like, I think it's like a four, four by eight, I think it is, or six by eight. And, you know, we have the list of what we do on the front page with our email number, and on the back is a little bit about us. So another one of my motives for like creating this business was two marches ago, I lost my dog to cancer. So on top of, you know, doing work for these people, we also give back to the community. So last year we did $500 in like dog food, cat food, toys, treats, Gave that to like local shelters and we also donated $500 in cash to like people that are running like cancer foundations where they like accept just cash money to, you know, for whoever needs it. So we donated a thousand dollars last year to like all kind of stuff like that. And yeah, so the first, like the way we started it was we just, you know, bought some door hangers, went door knocking, put them on. If they didn't answer all around the neighborhood, ordered 500 of them, probably got maybe two calls. <laughs> so that's where it started. You know, it, it started off really slow, but as we, you know, did good jobs for these people, that's like our main motive is like, we're not in it for the money. That's like a side, we get money for, you know, helping out. So doing a good job, getting referrals, people seeing our work and saying, wow, these kids, you know, they're 16 years old right now, 17 now, but they're out here, you know, doing the same amount of work just as good as, you know, people that are like in their thirties and forties that do it full time. And, you know, I think referrals go a long way. You do a good job. You're nice with the, you know, the customer and they appreciate what you're doing. And they also see why you're doing it referrals. And it does help that we drive now. Right. So now we can go all over the place. So we right now on a weekly basis, we have 15 lawns a week to cut on a recurring and then in between the week, we do, you know, power washing because power washing, you only need maybe like once every two years or something like that. So we can fit in other jobs um, in between our weeks with cutting lawns and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, it's just basically door hangers, business cards. Uh, this year I ordered t-shirts 
one's downstairs. I mean, I could send you a picture of it or something, maybe sure. in a little bit, but it's got, you know, our name on it with our number and on the back, it's got support small businesses and, you know, wear it around while we're working or just wherever we are. I know this is like a, a pound of stone story right out of the book, right? So I think it's like, you know, that's, that's it. You, 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 uh, knock on a lot of doors and 99 say no and one says yes and you're on your way and i think that's awesome yeah. it made, i mean and talk about just the perseverance of, of taking that as a captain and going to the locker room and you know you're in the third period and it's one nothing and you can't give up right you just keep pounding away and pounding away and pounding away I mean, it's yeah. a great uh, opportunity for you to translate these stories to to, the, to your teammates and and talk about you know all the things we talk about in this podcast to, to young men and women you know about that you, you never know when your chance is going to come as long as you keep pounding the stone and it sounds like you've, you've already uh you know found the secret uh you know to getting there so congratulations on get, getting that started up and uh to Thank you, you and uh emmett yeah emmett so both of you have great names by the way now i was gonna say too, you got the marketing down too with going door to door you know I, i'll tell you yeah. something max that kills me is the lawn care service is a heavy turnover world and i think that your attitude of just no you know we'll start with two and then it goes to 15 because uh, most people who have their lawns mode just want someone good. That's going to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What's nice. What's nice for your business is when you go to, to college or juniors or whatever you do after high school, you, you can hand it off or, or you can, you can hire people to continue it going. Mm -hmm. This is assuming you don't, you don't live where you live. Um, uh, I, these are fantastic stories, bud. Everything you're saying is amazing to me. Again, uh, the fact that you, you, you took this on yourself, the fact you give back, um, you're supporting something we say on this show a lot. Uh, that you know, great people make great hockey players. That it's part of being well rounded. And that the, the hard work is not just on or off the ice. It's it's in your life, right? And you're applying those lessons to what you do. And it's going to kind of lead me to my next question, which is, you know, how has playing hockey helped you as a business owner? How how does it apply? How do you utilize, you know, those skills, those strengths that you use in the game in the business? Yeah. So hockey for, is like a great example of like perseverance how many games you lose, how many tournaments you lose, how many tryouts you try out for a team for and you don't make the team, how many times you get said, like, you're too small, you're too, you know, you can't skate fast enough, your shot's not good enough, but you keep working on it, right? You want to get better. You want to go to the gym. You're going to get stronger. You know, you can't control your height, but you can, you know, pray, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I'm still praying for that too. <laughs> But, we all yeah, are buddy <laughs> it, it's definitely a great sport you know when you have other hobbies that require perseverance because there's so many routes that you can go for hockey it's not like where you just go straight out of college or like out of high school to college you know you got juniors and there's so many different leagues and try out for these teams and they keep telling you no like you're not good enough yet you're exactly like you know what i mean and yeah. i feel like perseverance is definitely taught through hockey. So it definitely helps me and Emmett because Emmett plays on a very good team too. He plays Cleveland Barons. He's a yeah. 06. So he played Cleveland Barons this year. I think they were like top 10 in the country for their age level. So he, his um, team definitely like shows perseverance as well. And with owning a business, you know, like getting told, sorry, we don't want, want you to cut our grass. All right, we'll go to the next door. You know, it's not something where it's like, all right, if this person doesn't want this job, I guess, you know, we're not good enough. Where yeah, you know, hockey, hockey plays a huge role in it because I don't know. I, I can't count how many times I've been turned down saying I wasn't good enough. I wasn't big enough, strong enough, decent shot, fast enough. So I feel like just being able to work on it and get better and, you know, just work on all your abilities just to keep going forward. Yeah, I'm sure a little conflict resolution has to come in there too, right? Somebody comes out, they didn't like something about the lawn or they, they thought you were going to do something different than you did. And you can't just say, well, you know, the hell with you, we're out of here. You know, give me exactly. money and leave. You got you to figure out a way to work it out and and make it better. And I guess the, yeah. uh, I'm sure, I'm sure the adage of the customer is always right has been uh, drilled into you a little bit, right? But it's kind of like your coaches yeah. and, and other people around you, you know, you just have to, you just have to learn to, you know, work within the structure you're in and, uh, and that's great. I mean, those are, those are, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to hear you in the locker room. Uh, you do you use a lot of uh, lawn care analogies in your speeches uh, in, in between periods or what? 
I try to keep it just mainly to hockey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, guys, right. listen, the grass is getting long. We got to trim it down. And the hedges are just getting out of control. The grass, yeah. They say the grass isn't always greener, but it is. Yeah. It's green. Yeah, it, it can be. If side. you use E&M log <laughs> ledge, I can't hope you. <laughs> well, right. in the game. <laughs> Max, right. I'll, I'll tell you right. one of the things I love about what you're saying, too, and we use this term sometimes, a growth mindset. Um, and yeah. it's so, so important. Uh, you know, there's another entrepreneurial saying that, you know, you get a million no's, but you only need one yes. And there's a lot of truth to that, right? And, and look, even where I'm at, and, and you know, I'm very blessed to be somewhat successful in hockey in, in the business world. I still hate getting no's and I still get plenty of no's, all right? Now, I, I, I can compartmentalize it a little better at my age than I could when I was a kid. But the point is, if anything, they motivate me. They motivate me heavily to, to keep going. But I still kind of uh, understand one yes is is worth a billion no's, right? It, mm -hmm. It's just yeah. we we a growth mentality is not focusing on the negative, and focusing on the positive from every situation. And and I'd say this in life, in almost ninety nine point nine percent, it's not everything, but al almost everything that happens to you in your life, there is a positive outcome that can be there. Whether you, you grow mentally, you can grow physically. You know, there's a lesson to be learned. Um, I, 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 you're already applying that at, at, you said you're 17 still, right? So, I mean, that's, yeah. that's insane. But I, I also got to admit, I love that, that, um, another part of your story that we kind of glossed over, you couldn't drive last year and you found a way, right? There's another lesson for everybody listening. If I could see a lot of people going, well, I don't, I can't drive, so we can't do this. No, you found a way and you did it. You know what I mean? I, I'll say this too, to everyone listening, not just uh, the young people. It is incredibly easy today to start a business. You you could have a business actually with an LLC and an EIN within 24 hours nowadays for very low cost if you wanted to, right? It's just, yeah. you need the spirit, right? You need to want to do it and you got to be willing mm -hmm. to fail. Um, so Max, I'm going to kind of flip the question over a little bit. Uh, I had asked, you know, how did hockey help you in business? Has business in turn helped you in hockey with relationships and how to deal with people. What have you taken from the business world to apply to the sport? Yeah, so um, with business, when you're talking to a customer, you know, obviously you're doing it for them. So this is their yard, their property. You know, when the customer thinks that you didn't do something right, are you going to fix it or are you going to blow up on them and just leave? <laughs> so I feel like the communication part from business to hockey is around the same. You're working as one the us and the customer are working as one we want to do a good job for them they want us to do a good job so they can pay us so i feel like when in a hockey you know locker room um if you're if you think this guy should have done something else he thought he was right he said you're wrong and you blow up on each other you're a team that that you know relationship is not strong it starts to get farther apart especially in between a game if you come back after the first period, you're down one nothing, and you didn't like how this kid did something, and then you start bickering back up and forth at each other. You know, when you go out for the second period, you might be down five nothing. So I feel like you know the business to hockey world and communication sense is very um, similar because mm -hmm. you know you want to be able to you know work as one. You don't want to be separate because just you don't want to you know cause any more damage to the relationship because like I said, hockey is very, you know, you need teamwork, you need communication, camaraderie. Um, it's not very good and it's probably not good if you have a team that's just a lot of individuals. So business to hockey yeah. sense, definitely communi communication is probably the most important thing. Yeah, I think, too, what comes to mind in a lot of analogies we'd like to use, it, it all can't be about hockey. So maybe why don't you tell us about a little bit about preparation, right? You have a business, you have hockey, same preparation, right? You have to you can't just show up to a job site without having the blade sharpened on the on the on the, uh, the you know, the, the lawnmower. You have to have gas. You got to make sure that you come and you yeah. can't just show up. And say, oh, we're out of gas. I guess we're getting out of here. I mean, so there's <laughs> a lot of preparation that goes on. There's a lot of preparation that goes on there. Right. And I think, that you know, maybe talk about. You know, as your hockey experience now over the last few years, you know, what are the what are some of the similarities you see in preparation uh, as you get into the season and as you get into you know practices and games, tournaments, things like that? Yeah, so preparation is also a very important part of like both business and hockey. 
I like being prepared. I don't like, like you said, just showing up and being like, oh, we have no gas. Showing up to the rink, oh, I don't have my skates. You know what I mean? So I like being prepared ahead of time. Um, usually when we're on the road, I like waking up pretty early, getting a good breakfast in, maybe go down, work out a little bit, get my body, you know, everything flowing, pack my bag, make sure I got everything like two hours in advance, it's packed, ready to go, waiting at the door. Um, same with business, you know, I, I try to have our schedule out for what we have to do for the week, a week prior. I like to, you know, tell all of our customers, like, I can't make it Monday, we'll be there Tuesdays, it's okay. Yeah, that's perfect. Let them know in a week advance. Preparation is very important because you never know when something might happen, like the day of. So being, you know, a week in advance for a business, maybe being like, you know, four or five hours in advance before a practice or game, it's perfect for hockey. Um, you know, just making sure that everything runs smoothly because, you know, anything can happen at any given moment. And you're saying like an hour before a game, our coach likes us to be half dressed, so our pants down, skates tied, half hour before the game starts. Because if you're, you know, you're you're rushing five minutes to get ready, the game starts at 12, 11 55, you're tying your skates and, and the lace snaps. What are you gonna do now? You're gonna be late for the game. So that our our coach, Coach Dave Kosick, he's very good at, you know, keeping us in line. So I I um give him a lot of credit and you know, I like to take some of his advice and apply it to what I know. I love, you, you've tapped yeah. on almost every level here, right? So the, the coach understanding communication and preparation, the players understanding communication, and then even parents to some level, uh, we say it all the time, communicating with the coaches, whether or not if you play for multiple teams, where you're going to be that week. Uh, I, I always say, Max, 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10 problems are caused by poor communication. Like yeah. it, it plays a role in every problem you've ever had with some communication was not done well or at all. Or like you said, two people were going at it. Um, and I think it's so important, especially in hockey, but especially in business. And I'll, I'll, Max, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, most of my success in business is is because I brought the hockey mentality to the business. The, yeah. I, I think the business world actually needs sport mentality more than the other way around, right? And you, yeah. you can always tell an employee or a teammate who has played a sport over someone who hasn't, right? Mm -hmm. I, I always say if your kids play sports, they're, they're going to have an advantage in that realm really no matter what level they play at, because they just have to be part of a team. So I think yeah. it's really important you're bringing up that level of communication. Also, maybe removing some of the ego from the communication, right? That that you're not going to always have a conversation that's great. You're going to have teammates in work and in hockey that just don't agree with you. And here's the yeah. thing. It's okay. You just have to know mm -hmm. how to work through those, because as you say, we have to be one, right? Yeah. And and uh, that that is a message for the ethos of the world right now. You know, we need to work together if we want to solve something. Mike, go ahead. Sorry, I see you had something. To... No, no, I was just thinking of all the business you're getting from all these parents that go away on all these weekend tournaments. They don't have time to do their lawn. I mean, you know, you, you see the uh, see the pictures of people's lawns all the time that, um, you know, they're away every weekend, uh, the whole the whole uh, summer at hockey tournaments. So probably a good business model. I love it. So, Max, let me ask you this, too, as, as we kind of move forward here. What's What's next for you, right? So this is your senior year. Uh, it, look, I'm trying to put myself back into being 18. I remember it was like the world was kind of <laughs> there, right? Um, you know, and, and just curious, like, what are you, you don't have to give me anything specific unless you got it, but what do you want to do? Like, what's the future look like for Max? Yeah, so obviously first goal is to try to make a junior team. That I guess that's every kid's dream as a hockey player growing up is, you know, to get to the next level. Um, to be completely honest, uh, other than junior hockey, I have no idea because like, it's <laughs> not said, a bad answer. Like, you know, me and my buddy, we own this business, right. And we're doing good. We're going to be seniors in high school. It's not like we're, you know, we're like 20 where we, we, we need to figure out something. We're living on our own. We need to pay bills, blah, blah, blah. We're 18 still. We are, we're 17 still turning 18. And like, we still live with our parents where it's like, we can build this now. And if it really explodes in a good way, like, would I need to go to like a high end college to get this degree that I'm not even going to use? It's a conversation I've had a lot with my mom because she's she's really um, you know harping down on me, making sure that I get good grades, which I do get good grades. But she really wants me to go to college and get like you know like a degree and blah blah blah. And she's been talking to me for a long time now about it. And you know, if I get the opportunity to play college hockey, I'll take it. Right. in a heartbeat 
outside of hockey. Do I go to college? I don't know. It's up in the air. We'll have to see because, you know, just things come to you and it's just decisions that you have to make, I guess. But right. I mean, the first goal is obviously, you know, junior hockey. That's the next step from uh, high school. And then if I get any like offers to play like college hockey, I play college hockey. But, and besides like that, I think, you know, main goal, if the lawn care business doesn't, you know, work and like expand like we want it to, which at this rate, I don't think that there's any doubt that it's not going to, but I would love to stay in like an entrepreneurial and business field where maybe I'd go to like community college and get like a business degree just so I have that at least. So Max, let me tell you a couple of things um, and, and how perfect your answer is. Okay. I'm going to let you know a little secret that they don't tell you when you're 17. Uh, no one has it figured out. And anyone yeah. who thinks they have it figured out, eventually it's not going to be figured out. Uh, so I think that your mindset of, you know what? I don't really know. I'm just going to kind of take it a day at a time. And I know some of these options are in front of me. That is the way to live. Because again, you know what? You know what happens when you think you figured it out? You end up at a nine to five job sitting at a desk all day because you got it figured out, right? And, and I can tell you this, all of my friends, I do remember this. All of my friends when I was 18, and again, my, my vision at 18 was very similar to yours. Right. I, I want to take hockey as far as I can. And everything else was kind of a kind of an extracurricular to me. College was going to be something, you know, but um, every single friend I had that said, well, this is exactly what I'm going to do. That did not happen. And I'm not saying that in a negative way. It just life changed the trajectory yeah. of things. Right. Many of them are still very successful, but they're just not doing what they said they were going to do at 18. Yeah. So for everybody listening, if you have a dream, there's nothing wrong with that. Pursue your dream. Right. I'm, I am not in any way telling somebody, if you think you want to do something to do it, you should go do it. But you got to remember, it's the habits, the type of person you are that really helps your trajectory. It helps you get to kind of where you want to be. Right. And I'll tell you what, as a parent, too, Max, I can tell you, I can understand where your mom's coming from with, yeah. with college. And like I always tell uh, young, young people your age, yeah, you should you should at least apply and make sure you get into a place whether you go or not is up to you. Right. Good grades are very important. Yes. Um, you know, and, and education is extremely important, but I love what you said, but you know what, I'm going to community college and get a business degree. There's a lot of things you can do. The, the world's your oyster. And I, I think as a parent and as a coach, that's kind of where you want someone your age to be, right? It's like, Hey, yeah, you know, there's lots of possibilities out there. I I'm, I'm, I'm excited. You didn't say I'm going to be the top long care professional on the planet earth. <laughs> right? yeah. because, because now you're locked in. Right. So, and if you want to do that, by the way, go, go do it. But I think that's just a fantastic answer. And, and obviously I'm wishing you the best with whatever you do. I think, I think the type of person you are, you're going to do great no matter what you do. So Mike, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, no. I'll just say just so my wife doesn't turn this podcast off that, yeah, the college is so important. And I think it's, uh, you know, it, it is, it is, it's like, well, it's like anything else, right? It's, it's what you, uh, you know, where, where your vision goes and what you want to do community college for your college tech school, uh, you know, some other, type opportunity to meet different school people of hard knocks. That's you know, always in school of hard knocks. I mean, I, you know, listen, I, I think, I think it's sometimes, you know, people go to school too fast anyway, you know, so I think right. just understanding, you know, just like we talk about for hockey players, having options, uh, the more options that are open to you that you can take advantage of is great. And it sounds like, you know, it, it's funny, but you know, you're going to be able to, you, if you did go to school, whether it's a two year business degree, you know, you'll actually be going, and, and have real knowledge of a business, you know, say, well, I know you said that that's a great way to do it, but this is actually what happened to me. Like, this is, this is, this is something that won't work, you know? So I think that that is a very, that gives a lot of clarity to education and whether it's a formal education, an in-work education, a, a life education. I mean, I think it's just great that you open yourself up to opportunities. And I think knowing that uh, hockey is a driver for you, I think that's great too, right? Because if you get an opportunity to to make a team and, and play for a couple more years, and then a college program likes you and says, wow, we'd love to have a person like you in our campus. Uh, and guess what? We can offer you all these other opportunities uh, while you still have your business. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I think it's a great opportunity, whatever you decide, Max. It sounds like at least you're thinking it through, having conversations, listening to your support structure around you. And, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's half the battle when you're, when you're 17, 18, 19 years old. Yeah. So great. Yeah, Max, I'll tell you, it, it, Mike's right. No textbook can teach you experience. 
Uh, I always love that line in uh, Avengers Endgame or the uh, Infinity War. Where he is, if you consider losing experience, experience is experience, right? And it's right. it's very true. Right. Last question for me, Max, and we'll let you go. Is uh, we got a lot of young people listening to this show and their parents. You know, what's your advice for them if they're thinking, you know, I want to start a business? What 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 is your advice for for young people that want to do that? Yeah, perseverance is definitely you know key. You know, if you get told no ninety nine times out of a hundred. Like you said, that one yes is worth a billion no's. I mean, you can't take no for an answer. Um, you got to do what you got to do. You got to take risks. You know, if you're not taking risks, there's no way to expand. You know, if you just stick to your neighborhood and that's it. If you this up, if that's what you want to do, then okay. But, you know, I know me and my buddy, we've put a lot into this business. We've risked a lot. And so far, it's worked out. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Sometimes it does. But for the majority, it's been, you know, going on an upright trend. So I feel like taking no for an answer is, you know, it definitely not the, like, good way to go, I guess. I don't know how to word that. But, you know, it's just perseverance is, like, drilled into my mind. You know, it's just, yeah, I keep working. You know, some days I get up and I'm exhausted. I don't want to do this right now, but go out there and get everything done. I think last week, one of the days I worked from like, I think it was like 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. It was 17 and a half miles, 35,000 steps in one day. And it was just, it was a, it was a bag. It was so tiring. But at the end of the day, it's like the end goal and what you want to do and what you're, you know, looking forward to in the future. It's like, I'm one step closer now. You know, I feel like risking, you know, your, your days and like, that's very beneficial for when you're older. Like a lot of kids now, they're not doing what we're doing, right? They want to, you know, stay at home, play video games 24 seven during the summer, or they're fine with, you know, going and working at like milkshake factory or McDonald's or something like that. But they learn nothing from that. You know, they learn how to be controlled and told what to do. I feel like when owning a business, you just got to go for it. You know, if it takes a lot of money to get put into it, that's the risk you got to take, but you know, it can work out if your cards play right. Um, Cause in the near future, you know, we're working on it now at a young age when we're, you know, at the age where people usually start probably businesses around like their mid twenties, we're already there. We were there now. Right. So we're a step ahead of, you know, the majority that's going to go through, you know, college or wait until their mid twenties to, you know, start a business. So I feel like, you know, just taking the risk and, you know, whatever comes at you, you just fight it head on. All right, Max, this was wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us. And that's going to do it for this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Remember, you can join our network on Facebook. It's a private group, a couple yes or no questions called Our Kids Play Hockey. And if you love this show, make sure you listen to our episodes of Our Kids Play Goalie and The Ride to the Rink, which is made specifically for the young ones listening at home. It's only two to five minutes every episode. All of that can be heard at our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. I want to thank you all for listening. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next week on our show. Take care, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. Make sure to like and subscribe right now if you found value wherever you're listening, whether it's a podcast network, a social media network, or our website, ourkidsplayhockey.com. Also, make sure to check out our children's book, When Hockey Stops, at whenhockeystops.com. It's a book that helps children deal with adversity in the game and in life. We're very proud of it. But thanks so much for listening to this edition of Our Kids Play Hockey, and we'll see you on the next episode.